yesterday Unreal 5.4 was released and we're going to start a series on migrating our Lyra project from 5.3 to 5.4. And so in this first video, we're just going to go over some of the basics, which are very similar to our 5.2 to 5.3 upgrade, but worth repeating as we are now moving our project forward to 5.4 to take advantage of some of the new capabilities. So the first thing to do is take a look at the capabilities uh, on the web pipe page for Unreal. Then I take a look at the migration documentation. So take a see if there's anything specific in the notes from Epic on changes to 5.4 that I need to think about before starting to migrate my project. And then of course, the next step will be to download the uh, source code from the Epic uh, GitHub repository. Um, one thing I like to look at is whether or not the Lyra sample has changed. So if you go under the 5.4 release, you'll see all the code. If you go into samples, you can kind of get a feel whether Lyra was changed or not. Here we see that there was commits last month. So there is some changes to the Lyra code. And if we look at sort of the config uh, or the source code, you'll see that there were changes um, last month, two months ago, et cetera. So there has been changes to the Lyra base project, which we will want to take forward into our existing project post migration. So the first thing we'll do is go to the engine page. So the first thing we want to do is check our overall disk capacity and make room on the hard drive before we start any of this process. Because if you're like me, you're short on disk space. And you'll probably need to do a few things uh, to be able to fully build out the 5.4 engine uh, and your project file. So if I go to my project and if I look at the current size of the 5.3.2 engine, uh, it's taking up about 200 gigabytes of final disk space for the engine. And then of course my project would uh, would take up some space as well. And that's gonna total another, I think it's about 20. So we'll need about 200 and 220 by the time we're all said and done. And I unfortunately only have 131. So before I start downloading anything, I'm going to do a couple of things to clean up as much space as possible, and then we'll pick this back up. Okay, by removing as many projects as I could, clearing out the vault, uninstalling all previous engines that I had installed, uh, going into my various projects, and cleaning out the Deferred data cache, the intermediate files, the binary files, and the save files, I was able to free up 205. Um, and so that's close enough. I will uh, keep my engine build that I was, uh, what I was trying to do is make sure I could keep the 5.3 engine build and I'll build 5.4 uh, right next to it. Okay, with the engine downloaded, you follow the steps the running of the startup, the generate um, script, and then compile in your Visual Studio or Rider, uh, you'll end up with a built engine. In, in my case, it took about three hours to build on my spec. Yours will vary. Uh, but once again, my disk space is full. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, I'm now down to 74 gig left. So I'm going to take my 5.3 engine off of my hard drive and stick it on a uh, an external drive and that freed up enough disk space for me to continue so that's the stage we're at right now we've got our engine built um, next we're going to go look at the lyra project so what i like to do is create two copies uh, i do a clean sort of control version so i can keep going back to it as a comparison point um, and then I create my new working project file. So I do two times the create project, making sure I select 5.4 from the version, following those steps. And when I'm done those steps, I will have our original project here at the top. 
um, my new project folder based on 5.4, and then my clean version that I can use as a control to compare uh, as I'm going through the edits. I ran into some interesting uh, information as I took a look at the file size between the source code in the project file that I downloaded as compared to the source file in the engine. So under the engine, under samples, games, Lyra, you have the source code that shipped with the engine. And over here, I have the source code that was shipped with the sample project. And while the files are the same, uh, there's a little bit of discrepancy in the size on disk. Um, so I was a little unclear where to go next. I did take a look at just the Lyra editor and Lyra game, uh, and those two are also different. So I have a choice to make. Uh, ordinarily, I would copy over the source files from the engine, um, which is not what I did this time. Uh, I left the source files the way they were. So this, this may be something you do differently based at the end of this video, but as of right now, I'm gonna start with the source files that came with the 5.4 project. So I am not gonna copy the source files from the engine folder to the project folder. I then right click our U project, change the engine from the standard 5.4 to my source build 5.4 and then make sure that Lyra would compile. So up to this point, all I've done is compiled basic Lyra code with a source engine. We've not changed anything yet. The next things we need to do is start migrating our logic. So there is some content uh, that I need to migrate over from my 5.3 to 5.4. Um, I have another folder called other, which is where I keep source files, models, etc., which I'll copy over. Um, I copy over the uh, open world launcher and then copy over any of the plugins and game features that are necessary from 5.3 to 5.4. So a quick comment, if you're following along in the videos and you have implemented the Ready Player Me video, then you're going to need two plugins, this GLTF runtime and the Ready Player Me plugins. Now those two plugins are 5.3 plugins. They're not yet a 5.4 plugin available. Uh, it will throw some compile errors when you go to compile it, but it seems to work just fine right now. We can always come back later when, when they've upgraded the 5.4 and take those plugins over again. But if you are past the point in the video series where we've done the Ready Player Me integration, you'll need to take these two uh, plugins from your 5.3 to your 5.4. And then there are several other steps uh, that I'm not gonna go over here if you're using the Ready Player Me. Um, the documentation explains what to do in the UI and what to do in the character parts um, and when you're launching a session to preload your avatar. So there are some things that you gotta go back into the Lyra code to fix up if you're doing the Ready Player Me. If you're not, you can skip those steps. The bulk of our logic is contained in these gameplay uh, game features that we've been building as we've moved along. And the nice thing of the game features is you can just pick them up and drop them into the new game features folder on the uh, 5.4 version and everything appears to work as advertised. So we copy those over. And then we have to go through and run a compare on the INI file to bring over anything that we've added to the INI files over the course of 5.3 and add them into our 5.4 uh, base files. Now, there's a number of different ways. I think in the last video, I used a different compare tool, uh, but I've learned that Notepad Plus has a plugin called Compare that you can enable. And once you enable that plugin, it'll show up underneath plugins and you can do some quick compares in Notepad. So you're gonna to wanna to go through each of the key files looking for any line changes. Um, I noticed that I had added a number of gameplay tags to the default gameplay tags INI. 
Uh, those I will move to their corresponding uh, game features. So this is also a good way to check, am I being clean and consistent with where I'm adding things? So I'm basically gonna move these over, uh, post this video uh, once everything's working so that I don't have to do this again on the next one. But you'll go through each of those files looking for any changes that you might have. Um, actually, before I go there, I believe I had changes in editor, engine, game, and gameplay text. I think I had four files. Oh, I wrote it right there. Editor, engine, game, and gameplay text. Yeah. So I had four files in which I had had made changes. You may have made more changes or less. Uh, just kind of go through each of those INI files. It's important to make sure you get all those things right. All right, we're finally to the point where we can attempt to compile our project. Uh, when I did it, I got 19 errors. Uh, you will get more or less depending on, on your code. Uh, but there are three basic categories of errors that we're gonna see. There are changes that we have made to the Lyra code. So some of these things here, the B show inventory persistent allow once, are things that we've added to the Lyra base code. Uh, in some places, we had to add the Lyra game API. Um, so you'll see some of this code is unreachable. That's because it's we have to go add these back in. And then there's some cases where Epic made changes to the way their code works. And we need to take those into consideration as well. So again, I ended up with about 19 uh, C++ errors. And, uh, and then I just, you know, set about fixing each one of those errors based on where they came from. And so for an example, um, the item definition, we needed to add the Lyra gameplay API. The standard does not have it. I had added these three variables, so I need to add those over. And again, just file by file, working through what changes need to be made. Um, you will also have to change this to be a primary data asset. I think I talk about that in a few minutes, but by default, the inventory item definition is a U object. Uh, because we're using the asset manager, it needs to be the primary data asset. Um, that's one of the changes you will have to make. All right, so for a quick summary, um, for me to get to a successful compile, um, the item definition, which was the one I just talked about on the previous page. Uh, the Lyra health component, I had added a reset death function to the Lyra health component that I had to re-add back in. Uh, the payloads for the gameplay events are now constant. That's what you see here on the far right. Uh, these pointers are now constant. They weren't before. So we have to uh, reapply how we do that. So we had to redesign those payload functions. We had to add a, a virtual function into our interact interface. This was uh, something we did in our AI spawner that allowed me to create NPCs that I could interact with. And then there was some code that needed to be commented out, um, I guess in 5.4 now, if you have code that is impossible to be reached, it will throw a warning which is probably a good thing. So I had a couple of those occurrences, which I fixed. Um, that got me through the compile errors. And then I ran into some linking errors. Uh, the item instance, quick bar component, inventory fragment, quick bar icon, health set, combat set, and experience manager all needed the library game API calls in order for linking to occur. Um, so by fixing those, to compile and then fixing those to link, I was able to successfully build our project at the C++ level. And so now it would be time to move on into the editor and see what else is broken. So just before I launch the editor, um, I know based on working with this project that there were a number of assets that I need to make sure I copy over. Um, again, I keep a running total kind of in a notepad, but when we did our bleed, uh, we left the gameplay effect damage here. So we need to copy that object over just using uh, Windows File Explorer is fine. If you're using the Ready Player Me, you've got this game character Ready Play Me folder and you have a UI menu characters folder that uh, go along with Ready Player Me. 
I have uh, copied over the mannequin and renamed it as uh, Unreal Editor 4 Core, just from a consistency perspective. So I make sure I copy those again. I have added two uh, physics materials for grass and wood. So I copy those over into the folder. I had to grab my swimming animations that I had put in locomotion. And um, under the UI Foundation Platform Input Keyboard, I added a bunch of new icons for the keyboard letters that don't come standard with Lyra. So again, I copied all of those over to make sure that those were in place before opening the editor so that any dependencies, et cetera, were gonna work fine. All right, so that takes us to finally opening up the editor. And the first thing that happens when I open the editor is I, re I remembered, oh, I need to make this a primary data asset because the asset manager wasn't finding this upon open, uh, which is why I talked about a few minutes ago. So I had to go back in, change this from U object to U primary data set. And then I had to make this uh, Lyra inventory item instance. Uh, the get item definition had to be in blueprint callable so that we could call those nodes here in the blueprint. So as we're going through the blueprint now, we're finding other things that are required for the blueprints to compile. Upon startup, uh, we got a number of errors. Uh, some of these I have not yet finished uh, debugging. Uh, some of them are related to the Ready Player Me uh, event here, this one, and the second one. This third one was that my shooter, uh, Last Man Standing, uh, failed. So this particular plugin didn't load. And when I compared the folder for the Last Man Standing to my 3v3 mode, I noticed that the data asset was not there. And so it looks like in 5.3, it was okay if you didn't have the data asset, it would load anyway, because uh, we never had one to begin with. But in 5.4, it looks like they put a check in to make sure that you have the data asset. So you basically right click miscellaneous new data asset and then take the gameplay feature data. You don't have to populate anything. You just need to create the asset. And then that allowed me to to load in that particular uh, game feature. Then if you looked at your uh, log, if you hit play, and run around, do a couple of things, and look at your log, you'll start to see some of the blueprint errors that are gonna to need to be fixed. So in my case, um, stack count and item definition, I needed to add U functions on top of those. And then you can see here this parse payload, uh, two items and one items, those are the ones that I re-architected. So of course those nodes don't exist anymore. And I'm able to see which blueprints are calling and failing. So I went to go through and fix each of those blueprints. And it's done by adding the, taking these from uh, edit anywhere and adding the blueprint read write to them. So both the pickup template and the inventory pickup, we had to go in and add the blueprint read write tags to each of those. And then, as I said, I re-architected the payload parsing, which used to look like this. And what I did is I created one function that I can call twice, the difference being whether or not we're parsing the first item or the second item. And by doing it this way instead of this way, um, I can pass the constants through and everything works just fine. So again, a little bit of re-architecture going on here. And then I can remove those functions and replace them with this new payload uh, parsing function. Uh, you may want to go in and double check your game instance. Um, I ran into some testing problems where the Lyra game instance was set up, not the Lyra game instance plus, which meant I couldn't access my APIs to go to the web server. Uh, you'll want to make sure your game map is set up appropriately as your starting game map and whatever your game mode, if you've overridden the game mode, what that is. Uh, and I also had to uh, change the key bindings for the emotes. Um, I use B for build, so I just reassess that to, I think, slash as an alternative. Otherwise, when you press B, you're going to get the emote over your build capabilities.
So the last major thing I need to do was go back in and rehook up any of the changes in the animation blueprints. Um, there are two primary changes that we've made over the video series. Um, one is the let me blow this up here. One is the left hand IK adjustment, uh, where we set some variables here in the uh, anim blueprint. So we use these last three variables here in the anim uh, in the ABP mannequin base blueprint. And then we created this function called update left hand, which basically takes that socket name, gets the transform and rotation, sets those variables, and then optionally draws a debug. And then we are calling that here on game thread to run that function and update it. The other changes for the left hand IK, so the three variables, the function and calling it in the item anim layers base, you also have uh, to create this extract left hand position from weapon, which was a bull. And then in the full body skeletal controls, we inserted these two nodes to translate the hand position based on the socket position on the weapon. So you have to recreate those from your previous ones. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a video out there that explains each of these steps. I'm just simply recreating them here in 5.4. And the other thing I have done is enabled swimming. And in order to enable swimming, um, I basically have my swimming anim animations. Uh, you need, uh, at least I needed two link layers. So under the A linked interface, um, over here, you can add uh, two more layers. So full body idle swimming state and full body swimming state. So these two are two new link layers that I've added to Lyra's list. That I said I had to do. Uh, all right. And then in the item anim layer base, create the variables to hold your uh, blend space for swimming and all the lights. So we do those. And then we override the We basically set up the blend space for swimming here so that we're doing all of our checks and feeding our blend space properly. So again, if you haven't set up swimming, you don't need to do that. Um, but those are the two changes that I had to make in order to get my project functioning again. And with those set here in 5.4, uh, let's go. These tend to get reset. I think I've already fixed them. Yeah, no bots, no attacking. And we're up and running in our a little bit of a laggy there. Uh, up and running in five four. Our survival um, mechanics is working. We get our buff for being in the water. Our swimming is back in functioning again. So it's our take damage. And I think basically everything we need is functioning here. If we go to our front end map, we have our login and we can see down here that we are logged in. We can go to our ready player me characters or we can launch Lyra. 
And let's go to the building sandbox. And this seems to be good. It's slow to load in, probably some shaders happening in the background. If I hit B, I can build. I hit I. I can get my inventory and filter through my inventory items. So things look to be functioning as they were in 5.3. Interact is interacting, so that works good. I can create a recipe. So everything seems to be functioning fine in 5.4 after those changes. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, I will add to the description if I discover any other things. But for now, I'm connecting to the database server. My menu system's working. I'm able to use all the features and functions that I had in 5.3. And yeah, we're up and running on 5.4. Thanks for watching.